In today's lesson, we will learn what determines the visual difference between Renaissance and Baroque style. In 1915, Swiss art historian Heinrich Wolflin published Principles of Art History. In his book, he isolated five opposed factors or concepts that defined the difference between High Renaissance and Baroque style. They are linear versus painterly, planar versus recessional, closed versus open form, multiplicity versus unity, and absolute versus relative clarity. To aid our discussion on the five concepts, we will view two paintings of the resurrection. The painting on the left was completed in 1479 by Renaissance painter Giovanni Bellini. The painting on the right was completed in 1612 by Baroque painter Peter Paul Rubens. The first pair describes the shift from the linear to the painterly. Renaissance has firm, plastic form with strongly stressed outlines. Baroque replaces it with quivering and flickering moving form. Linear versus painterly. Elements in the linear canvas are primarily described by line. Figures are distinct from one another and the painting is basically a colored drawing. The painterly painting relies on color to express form. Paint is loosely handled. Form is not defined with discrete lines, but the edges of the forms, they're not readily apparent. It is to imply or express. The second pair reflects the shift from plane to recession. Renaissance visualizes the surface using planes that are parallel to the picture plane. Baroque visualizes greater depth using diagonal planes that recede from the picture plane. Plane versus recession. Objects in the planar painting are usually laid out parallel to the picture plane. We tend to see the flat sides of things. Depth is signified by a succession of parallel lines into space. In the recessional painting on the right, objects turn corners to the viewer enhancing the diagonal. There is a greater sense of motion up to and away from your eye within the painting. The third pair demonstrates the shift from closed to open form. Renaissance closed form is restricted to the picture plane and inclusive. Baroque opens form and suggest that areas extend beyond the borders of the work. Closed versus open form. In the closed form on the left, space in the painting seems restricted by the edge of the canvas. The objects within determine, define, and limit the overall scene. In the open form on the right, the painted space appears to stretch on infinitely beyond the limits of the canvas, as if the viewer could peek around behind the frame and find more imagery. The fourth pair illustrates the shift from multiplicity to unity. Renaissance presents singular parts that retain relative independence. The Baroque expresses itself as a sense of unity where individual parts are secondary to the whole of the composition. Multiplicity versus unity. Multiplicity feels like a collection of individual elements grouped together in the space of the picture. You feel you could pluck one object right out of the painting. In the unified painting on the right, one senses the objects not necessarily as individual elements, but as coherent parts of a general scene. The fifth 
and final pairing addresses the shift from relative clearness to unclearness. Renaissance is usually distinct, and light clearly defines form in detail. The Baroque evades clearness to make the totality of the picture seem almost unintentional. Absolute versus relative clarity. In the painting with absolute clarity, objects tend to be placed in strong, clear light so their edges are crisp and the viewer has an immediate understanding of the form of the object. Relative clarity, as seen on the right, on the other hand has to do with the optical sensation of objects. They generally tend to be darker and more loosely focused. So, can you find a Renaissance painting and a Baroque painting that fits the concepts of Henrik Wolflin? Can you find, through reviewing chapters 16 through 20, in your own text, paintings that reflect the characteristics learned in this lecture. Have fun and share your pairings with fellow students in the Blackboard Discussion Board entitled Wolflin's Concepts.